Hi, welcome to our next video. Today we're going to be doing a diagnostic laparoscopy, so you can join us in the operating theatre and see step by step exactly what happens. You may well have had a diagnostic laparoscopy in the past. It's a very commonly performed procedure in the diagnosis of endometriosis. In fact, it's what we call the gold standard in terms of a diagnostic test. We know that ultrasound can be suggestive, MRI can be a little bit more specific and tell us what type of endometriosis we're dealing with, but the only true test to diagnose and importantly treat endometriosis would be undergoing a laparoscopy. Laparoscopy is of course an invasive test. It involves a trip to hospital, a general anaesthetic, and there are certain risks and recovery involved. So it's not for everyone. I would also mention a slight disclaimer. We are gonna be seeing some live operating, so perhaps the more squeamish among you might not want to watch the next part of the video. But if you do, we hope it'll give you some really good step-by-step -step information, learning all the steps of diagnostic laparoscopy to help you get ahead around the sort of things that we're looking for and that we can achieve. We will be putting out another video on our YouTube channel that's much more medically specific, and this is designed for doctors in training or medical students to learn each step of a diagnostic laparoscopy as they get used to performing them themselves. Right, we'll see you in the operating theatre. So here we are about to perform our laparoscopy. We're going to do a three-port laparoscopy here. So that's three incisions on the tummy. The first and the main incision is on the tummy button, or as we call it, the umbilicus. It's around about a 10 millimeter incision, so just about a centimeter. We use the umbilicus for two primary reasons. Number one, it's central in the tummy and has a really good view looking down onto the pelvis. Number two, it's a scar where all the layers of the abdomen are fused together, and it's something that everyone already has. So there you can see the first incision with a scalpel which has just gone through the superficial layer of the skin. This instrument is called a varus needle. You can see at the end, it's a sharp needle with a little spring, such that when it's gone through the stiff layers of the abdomen into the opening we call the peritoneal cavity, the spring is then activated so it doesn't injure anything below, things like the bowel or major blood vessels. So the varus is inserted steadily through the layers of the abdomen until you can feel that spring release. We test her in the correct cavity using this solution called saline, so it's just salty water which drops freely into the peritoneum, but were the needle to be into any bowel or blood, that wouldn't happen so clearly. Now we attach the gas. We use carbon dioxide because it's inert, and we use this insufflator or pump to fill up the abdomen until it's up to a certain pressure. You can see there the way the skin reacts to the abdomen being filled with gas, and the pressures now look good. It's time to go in with our laparoscope. So this is a long camera with a light at the end. It's about 30 centimetres long, and we place it through this port you can see here. Taking a closer look at the port, you can see it has various features. Here is the pipe we use to fill up with gas. This balloon being inserted allows us to provide a good seal between the peritoneal cavity so we don't leak any gas. So here we go, entering into the abdomen. You can see the camera's looking down the port now, so we can see all the layers we need to go through to reduce the risk of any damage to anything like bladder or bowel. And we're in. First of all, let's have a good look around inside the tummy and check there's no injury to anything on the way in. This one all looks good. So now it's time to place one of our lateral ports, so a port on the side. This is about a five millimeter incision, so half the size of the original port. And we use a very similar, albeit smaller device but this time you can watch it go in really carefully to make sure there's no risk of any damage to anything beyond. So you can see that port there entering through the front of the abdominal wall and there's bowel beyond. This is local anaesthetic going in now. You'd think the patient is under general anaesthetic, but actually having local anaesthetic reduces the amount of anaesthetic drugs the patient needs, therefore has a lower risk of having side effects like drowsiness or vomiting afterwards. So another five millimeter incision on this side there's a small amount of bleeding there, but we know on average there's far less blood loss with a laparoscopy than there would be with a larger abdominal incision. And that port goes in nicely. And here we see the balloon being inflated to allow us a really good seal so no gas leaks into the operating theatre. So now it's our initial survey. We can see here some structures. We have the uterus in the middle, the bowel at the back, Fallopian tubes highlighted on either side. The ovaries are just out of view here behind the fallopian tubes. And at the front there on the left hand side we can see the bladder. The rectum lives at the back and in this case it's nice and free and mobile from all the other structures. Occasionally endometriosis actually means these two are very well stuck together. So a little bit of cleaning and suction. 
allows us to clearly visualize everything. And going down into the pelvis, we can see here on the right hand side, that patch of endometriosis. This looks like quite superficial endometriosis, just involving the peritoneum. Here we're looking at the fallopian tube and ovary on the right hand side, the uterus there on the left. The fallopian tube moves freely around the ovary and it's constantly wafting around and this end of the fallopian tube is where the eggs travel down before conception happening deeper down in the fallopian tube. In endometriosis, occasionally these structures are all very scarred and stuck together and it's one of the causes of subfertility. Here we're going to take a close look at what we call the ureter. This is the tube that moves from the kidney all the way down to the bladder and it carries urine along its course. It lives fairly close to the gynaecological organs, things like the ovary and the womb, so it can be exposed to damage as part of a lot of gynaecological procedures, including a hysterectomy. Endometriosis also likes to live fairly close to this, so it can be quite difficult to dissect. Here we have the same view on the left-hand side, so an ovary at the top there. Looking down at the peritoneum on the left-hand side, we'll get a detailed view of the peritoneum in a second, and you can see here endometriosis that looks slightly different. This is a whiter variety of endometriosis. It's funny to think how these relatively small lesions can actually cause such significant pain and difficulties. Here we find endometriosis on the ovary. So the diagnostic laparoscopy is a very systematic survey. And now we're going to look at the upper abdomen. Here you can see the gallbladder, the liver and the bowel. The diaphragm importantly divides the abdomen from the thorax, which is the chest cavity. And it's also a place where endometriosis can live. People with diaphragmatic endometriosis often have symptoms of shortness of breath or sometimes collapsed lungs when they have their period. So the heart lives very close to the diaphragm, more towards the left-hand side, and you can see the heart pulsations carried through into the abdomen. Here we are freeing up the bowel from the left-hand side of the abdomen. This probably wasn't as a result of endometriosis, but we need to move it out the way to be able to dissect clearly and have a good view of what we're looking at. The rectum moves really freely, and we can see the ureter nicely on the left-hand side as well as the right. Now we're going to excise this small spot of ovarian endometriosis. You can see that dark brown, we call it chocolatey-like fluid, coming out there when the laser excises this patch. That's all endometriotic tissue, so it's the same sort of tissue we find in a large endometriosis cyst on the ovary, what we call an endometrioma. The device we're using to excise endometriosis in this case is a carbon dioxide laser. Here we get a closer look at this endometriosis on the left-hand side, all living very superficially on the peritoneum, which we're going to excise in two seconds. The ovary often falls down under gravity and it can make dissection of endometriosis quite tricky. So in this case, we're performing a procedure called ovarian suspension. We're using a stitch that goes in through the tummy on the left-hand side to attach the ovary to the anterior abdominal wall. You'd think this looks fairly brutal, but actually the ovary is very happy being stitched in this way. And even as part of some fertility procedures, a similar thing called ovarian drilling happens to improve the ability for the ovary to produce eggs. This is a stitch that's going to be removed at the end of the procedure, so we just place a small clip to hold everything in place. And you can see the ovary easily being lifted away, just resisting gravity so we can clearly dissect down on that left-hand side. So now you can see this peritoneum being lifted up. This is normal, healthy, mobile peritoneum that we're excising away with the laser. We're taking away quite a large area, so we're well clear of all the endometriosis, so there's a lower risk of recurrence after we've removed this patch. The laser cuts very cleanly through the peritoneum and has a low risk of damage to surrounding structures. So here we are having removed this patch. You can see a large area there where the peritoneum's been removed. It looks fairly dramatic, but actually this peritoneum is going to grow back really, really quickly. And the hope is all this normal, healthy peritoneum will occupy that space where the endometriosis once was. Now it's time to excise the other patch of endometriosis we saw deep in the pelvis, and we can see there a normal patch of healthy tissue which will regrow and occupy that space. That was all the endometriosis we saw on this side, so we can free the ovary now to fall back into place quite happily. As part of any diagnostic laparoscopy, it's important to look for any other things that might be causing the patient's symptoms. In this case, always check the appendix, which lives towards the right-hand side. You can see it here, looking really nice and healthy, attached to the large bowel. Now going back in with our original scope, we get a slightly better view when we're not using the laser. We can see in the front of the womb, the bladder is all very happy and healthy, no sign of any endometriosis there. This solution we add to the pelvis reduces the risk of forming scar tissue or adhesions, which can sometimes cause patients pain after surgery, even when there isn't any endometriosis. 
Now we carefully suck out all the gas. You can watch the abdomen going back to a normal shape. And then it's time to take our ports out and close everything up. Here's the balloons being released to allow the ports to be removed. And then one by one, the ports carefully come out, releasing that last bit of gas. This is us closing the umbilicus or tummy button. There's a layer deep to the skin which holds everything together. If we didn't close this layer, there's a small risk of having a hernia after the operation. And then we use a reabsorbable stitch to close the skin. This stitch goes just underneath the surface, so usually people don't see any knots. There's various techniques for closing this, but most of the time stitches don't need to be removed. A couple of steri strips just to hold everything carefully in place. And then a last dressing. We can trim the ends of the stitch, and we're all finished. That was, from start to finish, a diagnostic laparoscopy in excision of peritoneal and ovarian endometriosis. This patient made a really good recovery and was actually home again the same day. We look forward to seeing you soon for more videos, so remember to like and subscribe. Keep an eye out for more videos as they come along. Don't forget to comment down below and give us some more information about what you want to see from this channel, whether that's more live operating, some specific types of endometriosis, or other sort of gynaecological conditions. Anyway, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.